what's up guys welcome back to another video today's video needs a lot of explaining before i get into it originally i had a whole idea that i was going to do a secret tbr where i read the finalist in the contemporary category for the book shimmy awards and i started with again but better by christine riccio and i just couldn't finish the whole video and that's why I decided that I would stop doing secret TBR. So I figured that since I already filmed a whole video of me talking about Again But Better, and I've seen a lot of people do it, that I would get on that train. Um, and I would like to get off, please, because it was so bad. But first, here's a disclaimer, because I always need to do a disclaimer. This is me just talking about the book. Um, this is kind of like a reading vlog. So originally this was going to be a whole reading vlog and I just decided to scrap the idea, but I have the footage, so why not post it? Um, because it's very good. Um, I enjoy it. Here's my disclaimer that I love Christine. She's great. She started booktube and I love that. And so this was just me reading her book and I went into it with an open mind and I was like, whoa, maybe this will be good. Um, but I didn't like it and I feel like that's a consensus for most of the videos so please don't hate don't give me any hate because I am not doing this for hate I just thought that I would post my thoughts so if you like my videos where I rant about books then here this is the video for you but if you don't want that um then don't but if you just want to hear my opinions about the book Cool. If you enjoyed it, I love that so much. I'm so glad that Christine has people that really liked her book. I hate that I didn't like it. I really wish I would have liked it because I thought it was going to be good and I was so anticipating it um, and this was a disappointment for me. <laughs> so here is my experience reading Again But Better by Christine Rescio. What's up guys? It's the first day of reading for this video. It's currently Christmas and I'm coming at you on my new microphone for my camera. So excited about it. I have been really loving audio lately so I'm excited to finally have a microphone. Uh, I named him Mike the microphone so definitely give him a warm welcome. I asked you on Twitter and Instagram what book I should start and I got two different responses. On Instagram people were telling me frankly in love and on Twitter people were telling me again but better. So I'm torn but I think I'm just gonna go with whatever has the highest amount of votes. So let's see. On Instagram, the results were 12 for Frankly in Love. Coming up second was On the Come Up. Third place is Again But Better. And in fourth place was American Royals. Instagram, there were 30 votes. And on Twitter, there were 31. And 39% voted for Again But Better. So I think I'm just going to start out with Again But Better. And then my second choice will be Frankly in Love, just to make it fair. So nervous but I'm glad to finally get it over with. So I'm gonna read it. I'll let you guys know how I feel once I get into like the middle of it. And then that's it. Let's get this show on the road. Let's get this reading on the road, I guess. I don't know. So I wasn't going to update until I've actually read more of the book, but I've only gotten a chapter in and yikes. I have already cringed over the span of 10 pages and I feel like I need to drink a beer or wine just to get through this book. Wow. <laughs> okay. I get how people have had mixed feelings about it. Not everyone's going to like every single book no matter who it's by. It's just, um, <laughs> I couldn't even tell you in the first chapter where she's going unless I looked at the back to know what the book's about and it says London, but she already flew to London and never even said that she was flying to London. And Christine, that's your first mistake. I'm also going to repeat that this is an arc, so... I don't know what the final copy's like. I don't know if she actually did. Um, but the fact that this whole book is about her studying abroad and I didn't actually know where my character was going, that is really alarming. So, uh, I was gonna say I'm excited, but I'm really not excited to continue. Uh, if I need to DNF this, I will. I'm really not gonna force myself to read books I don't wanna read. And so, yeah. 
I'll let you guys know. My mark will be like the second half of the book. So I won't just be like, oh, I'm in the first chapter. I'm going to DNF it because that isn't giving it a fair chance. But since I've written a book, I kind of know a thing or two. And at least you know my main character by the first chapter of the book. Not like my, my main character doesn't go anywhere, but... If he was going somewhere, I would probably tell you where he was going. And some people don't read the synopsises, so you should probably tell your reader where your main character is going. That's it. Um, me and Becca were talking about it and saying that this basically is Anna and the French Kiss, but with a different main character. Like, the main character has a different name, it's set in college, and it just has a different title. <laughs> So that's my two cents on again, but better right now. Hopefully it gets a little bit better, but the odds are probably not in my favor. It is December 28th and I'm still reading Again But Better. I am going to finish it today. That's the plan because I need to get done this book because I'm so done with it. And I've heard that it gets worse, so I have to read it just to experience it um so love that for me it is just so cringy every time i pick it up and i'm like upset about it because i really wanted to read christine's book when she was hyping it up on her channel and doing all of her videos for example there's a scene where she meets this guy and he lives in her flat and we find out his name is pilot that makes me really want to throw up and I'm pretty sure Christine only did that because her main character loves TV. Another problem is that the main character just feels like Christine too much. I feel like this is common knowledge that the first rule of writing a book is not to make the main character you. Um, like, not at all. Like, yeah, you can put in your interest and all, but your main character should not be you at all. Um, just a life tip if you're ever writing a book. She meets this guy. She doesn't know where the grocery store is. They try to find it together. And she says to herself in her head, is this a date? No, it's not. You're going to the grocery store to get food and groceries. That's it. <laughs> That's it. This isn't like, <laughs> this isn't you the um, video, if you know what that is, um, you where they met in Whole Foods and he was buying rosé and she was buying celery. I met you a month ago at Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. Now we're living together. You were buying celery. <laughs> you were buying rosé? It's not like that. You're just walking to the grocery store to get groceries and then she almost got hit by a car and honestly, I wish she would have. I was waiting for her to get hit by a car and she didn't. And then she says that she's never learned about culture shock and that makes me think, how did you get into college? Because culture, like she said like, oh, she doesn't believe in culture shock. Like what? That, oh my God, I'm sorry, but Shane is just a very unlikable character. I hate her and I hate this book so much. <laughs> It's so bad. And the fact that Christine has like put herself into the book really is throwing me off because I don't want to read about Christine. I want to read about Shane, who is not Christine. Apparently, Shane is her evil twin sister. So I'm going to try to get through this book. Every time I pick it up, I just cringe because it is just so cringy. And yeah, I don't know. I just hate it so much. I don't know how this got nominated. I mean, I actually know how it got nominated because people like Christine and they nominated it. That's why it's in the finalist. But as a book, I really hope it doesn't win as the winner because right now this is not a winner. But I will update you guys later when I have finished this horrible book. And I'm sorry for like shitting on it because I like Christine and I don't want to like shit on her book. This book is just badly written and it is just really 
destroying me. <laughs> and I'm not shitting on Christine. The person and their work is so much different. I really like Christine. I like her channel. I grew up watching her channel. But at the same time, she, if she's writing a sophomore novel, I really hope it's better than this. Like, maybe I will pick up her sequel, but honestly, we'll see. Um, because I know she is writing, like, another book, but hopefully it doesn't have this character. I feel like this is going to be a Went Dimple Met Rishi situation. I really hated that book as well, so love that for me. So I'm gonna stop rambling about this horrible book, um, but I just want to get out of the way and make it clear that I'm not hating on Christine. I just really am not enjoying this book. <laughs> That's it. Biggest accomplishment in 2019 is finishing this book. What's up guys? It is the 29th of December. This morning I finished again but better. Two stars is being generous, but this book was so bad. I just wrote my whole review, so my Goodreads review will be linked down below. And I just kind of roasted this book without the, so excluding the acknowledgements, this book is 342 pages. The middle was like 170 and that's part two. So the book is in like three parts and the third part, ugh, the third part is worse. Um, sometimes the debut novels are just a hit or miss. Christine wasn't an English major. She went to school for film. So I was like, okay, this is probably going to just feel like a screenplay. No. This just feels like a self-insert book. So I felt like I was following Christine around during her time in London in 2011 because I'm pretty sure that that's the time that she would have been in college. Um, <laughs> this isn't a coincidence. On the cover, you can see the main character, Shane, and she looks just like Christine. And if you read the book, she is Christine. <laughs> so I'm saying that Shane is like Christine just because they have so many things in common, like too many things in common. They love Harry Potter, which I'm so sick of that. Like every character just loves Harry Potter. Like stop. It's just, that is not a personality trait. Liking TV, liking movies, liking Harry Potter is not a personality trait. It's an interest. Personality traits and interests are two different things. You associate people with their interests. I don't know, maybe like Christine just needs to like go back to school to like remember what it's like. I'm also separating Christine as a person and the book. This is not Christine, this is her book. Christine is a different person but reading this book, I read Christine because Shane is Christine. <laughs> she has a blog called French Watermelon 19. And when I read that, I was just like, this has to be a joke. This has to be like a parody of Anna and the French Kiss or something like that. Because I swear, swear to God, this is what it was. This, there were so many times that I cringed. And then by the end of the book, she gets a YouTube channel and I'm just like, stop. And the blog was a travel blog. Like you really couldn't have come up with anything else. Like you're literally in London. French Watermelons 19 is all you could come up with. And at that point, I was like, she lacks imagination. And I knew, I knew that from the beginning because when she named the love interest Pilot because she likes TV, I was like, come on. You easily could have just named him like a, like Michael Scott and been like, oh, I love The Office. Haha, ha, that's so funny that that's your name. Like, what a coincidence because it is a coincidence. Someone's name being Pilot just reminds me of like Pontius Pilot from like the Bible. <laughs> like, that is the only time I've ever seen that name. And Pilot is just like a plot device, basically. We don't really know a lot about him. We just know that he likes music and his name is Pilot and he took a one-way ticket to England and then we find out he has a girlfriend, which is another thing that I really bothered me because Shane has never had a boyfriend. She's never been kissed, which we definitely could have made a whole cliche, but Christine didn't do that. Um, Christine just made Shane be the type of girl that is like, oh, you have a girlfriend, I don't care. Um, and then six years later decides to just go and see him and then they get transported to January 2011 in London to redo what they didn't do in London but they didn't even do anything in London so it just makes no sense at all and then 
the dude is still with his girlfriend, so he basically cheats on her during the time, but, oh, he sent her, he sent her a voicemail, so she didn't get it, but no, dude, you were still cheating on her, but Shane has never had a boyfriend, she's like, oh, that's okay, no. She has the mindset of the type of person who has never been in a relationship, but they've watched TV and read books and movies and all of that, like a Laura Dean situation where she thinks that, like, romance is everything you've read in books and shit, but it's not at all. Just, like, Oh, she just doesn't get it because she's never had a relationship with like that doesn't mean that she needs to be a crazy person She's kind of like a crazy ex-girlfriend which actually comes back to the point that Christine's favorite show is crazy ex-girlfriend Does that have any correlation? Probably I think that she just really lacks imagination and she needs to find her imagination if she's going to write another book and like write it better because the writing was just so cringy. Like there's an analogy that makes no sense whatsoever. It's, do you like to play cards? Do I like to play cards? Does a bear shit in the woods? Does a bear shit in the woods? That is not, there are two different things. I don't even know what the analogy would be because it doesn't make any sense to even be an analogy. Why couldn't he just say yes? I do like to play cards or no, I don't like to play cards. And then, and then just leave it at that. There's another point where last night while I was reading, I had like a epiphany basically, realizing that the one character, she's a side character, she's a flatmate, and she's basically like really close with Shane. Her name is Babe. And guess what? She loves Disney, she's tall, and she is fat. And does that remind you of anyone? Because it reminds me of Christine's best friend, Natasha from Toshopolis. There's a way to like insert your friends, but not insert them. Like you basically inserted her and gave her a different name, but it's still, it's still her. This is a fictional book with fictional characters. So come up with a fictional character, not somebody that you know personally. When I read I Wish You All the Best, Mason decided that they would name one of their characters after one of their friends. That is how you do it. You don't make the character them. That's, that's wrong. Like, that is just very wrong. Um, also, just a lot of pop culture references. There's like a point where she actually named a professor, Professor Blackstairs, which I have never read Cassandra Clare, but I know that that is a Cassandra Clare reference. And this brings me back to the imagination thing where I'm like, you don't have any imagination. You couldn't think of a random last name and just name that the professor's name. Like seriously, you couldn't do that? It just doesn't make any sense to me. And I just, I'm just gonna wrap it up here, say that Christine has a lack of imagination. <laughs> she has self-inserted herself into this book. The end of the book makes no sense to me because there was nothing to change. So what is she changing? Like she changed a couple of things. The thing that really fascinated me was that Shane gets an internship and I wish the whole book would have been about that because I was like, there's so many instances where she could just like make the whole book about that where she goes off with her friends and all too but like she is primarily at the travel blog but then she's like hiding stuff from her parents and that's just just this whole book is a mess when i heard that people were saying like guys this book is bad i was like oh okay like maybe it's not that bad but it really is that bad and I kind of like feel bad for Christine because I'm just like, oh, like that sucks to like have your first book like that. But did anyone edit this? Did anyone see this? Go read my review if you want to know more because I don't want to like make this video too long. I am really shocked that I finished it, but I just wanted to finish it to see what happens. Like what am I missing? Because people have given it a five star and it was in these awards. And I swear if this wins the awards, I'm gonna be so mad because it doesn't deserve it. So yeah, I don't know. I'm like, I'm like never mean about books and I don't want it to like come off as me being like, oh, I hate Christine, which like I don't at all. Christine just really needs help in writing a book and I hope that she takes the criticism that everyone is giving her for her next book and makes it better because I will read her next book, but 
if I can't get through 100 pages of it, then oh, definitely take the criticism because she needs the criticism. And as a fan of Tiny Meat Gang, Cody Ko, and Noelle Miller, this just felt like a long That's Cringe video that never ended. <laughs>